So welcome, in today's video we're going to be going over the new EcoFlow Delta 2 Max, but we're also going to be doing some comparisons of gas generators versus portable power stations. This has been a hot topic on the channel because we review everything on the channel. I am of the belief of having some sort of backup power. And I honestly don't care what you get, but we want to educate you properly so you're spending your hard earned money on the right thing that's going to benefit you. Now as we review generators and portable solar power stations right here, there's all Always a debate of which one people prefer. So let's go over some of the pros and cons. And by the way, EcoFlow asked me to make this video. I'm not getting paid to make it, but if you use a link down in the description to purchase the new Delta 2 Max, I do earn a small commission. It doesn't cost you a dime extra. And by the way, I'll have a discount code down there as well, which will get you some money off. So it's worth it to use my link. And if you purchase the new Delta 2 Max within the next few weeks, they're offering some incentives, including free solar panels and some other discounts as well. So you may want to check on that. So let's get you the right information with hurricane season upcoming and everything else that we all deal with power outages, get you something. I highly recommend it. Protect you and your family, protect your food and other investments. So for starter, the new Delta 2 Max just came out the day that I released this video. I've actually had this for quite a while and been doing some testing with it. I appreciate EcoFlow sending it out early so I could see if there was any issues with it before public release. The new Delta 2 Max is 2400 watts continuous, 4800 watt surge. So I thought this would be an excellent unit to compare to a 2200 watt peak inverter generator that I have right here. 1900 continuous. This is as close as I can get power wise for what I currently own. So that's one of the first benefits let's talk about where I think a portable power station always outwins a generator and that's going to be on surge capacity. So smaller generators like this with smaller engines have a hard time ramping up and handling a heck of a surge. Your larger generators you're going to tend to see more of a spread between the continuous running power and that surge power. But the portable power stations always seem to win in this category. Category. So we got 2400 watts continuous running right here, 4800 surge. Over here we've got 1900 continuous, only 2200 surge. So you're talking a very small increase in surge capacity there. Long story short, that means this one's going to be to start up more things with a higher initial load than a gas generator. So let's go ahead and talk about the hottest topic of all, dive right into this. Typically whenever you start doing comparisons, the number one thing that people want to know about is cost difference or money. That's typically where a gas generator is going to win out. This one, for example, I think is around $500, $550 right now. I don't have current pricing on this, but it's probably going to be two to three times the cost of a unit like this. You're just getting newer and completely different technology. Now, if we're doing a fair comparison, I think EcoFlow makes top of the line, top quality products. I've always thought that. I've been running their stuff for years. Probably a better comparison would be this to say the 2200 watt Honda inverter generator that's very similar to this model. Those run about $1,200 right now currently on Amazon, which I'm assuming is probably gonna be a closer price to what these are gonna go for. So let's talk about runtime. That's usually the number two hot topic where people are going to be pro a gas generator. As long as you can keep filling this up, it technically can run forever. Yes, you have to stop. It does need cool down periods. You need to change the oil, things such as that. You need to top the fuel off, but these can technically run longer. However, on a unit like this, you can add up to two additional batteries for 6,000 kilowatt hours of capacity on this new unit right here. And that's via these ports right here on the backside to add additional batteries. By the way, you can see I just picked that up. This weighs in at about 50 pounds, so it's very portable. That's a very comparable weight to this generator right here. So they're evenly matched as far as portability goes. Now that runtime, adding fuel, changing oil that I just discussed, that's actually a con to a gas generator. And that is probably a huge reason why a lot of people are going to these particular units right here. Completely emissions free, zero service. There's no change in oil here. There's no fooling with gas. As long as you have some way to charge this up, either via the wall or solar. Speaking of, this new unit has dual solar ports for 1,000 watts of charging, 500 watts each. And you can do up to 1800 watts wall charging right here and do combined recharging. You can recharge this unit in about 43 minutes or you can continuously run it if you provide power one of these two ways. Here's your 620 amp outlets off the back to get you that full 2400 watts and it comes with your typical 12 volt accessories here. Barrel plug adapters for 12 volts, 3 amps max and a 10 amp max cigarette lighter. 
So if you want to run this continuous, especially in an off-grid scenario, you're going to need additional solar panels to go with this. I guess you could say that's a negative, but I think the majority of people that are purchasing these units know that solar is the main way that you run these. Although a lot of people buy these for emergency backup. You can charge it via the wall outlet, say if you know a hurricane or a storm's coming, stick it right in your closet. If you lose power and you want to run that CPAP or medical equipment, your freezers, your refrigerators, by the way, we're going to test some of that in this episode, you just pull this out, it's charged and ready to go. So some people use it as battery storage and quick emergency backup. Some people are going to run solar to these and run them longer. But the lack of emissions and maintenance is probably the biggest selling points to these for most people. I think a lot of people think for themselves when they talk about the pros of gas generators. And don't get me wrong, I'm a huge proponent of gas generators. I own many of them. I like the convenience of those as well. But not everybody lives to where you can run gas generators. A lot of people live in high rise buildings, live in duplexes, apartments, things such as that, to where this is not at all possible to run. Some people live in areas with HOA restrictions to where you can't run generators at night, for example, can't make certain amount of noises. These are completely silent other than some fan noise, far quieter than a gas generator. Something else people don't think of, if you lived in a high theft or crime area, a generator running at nighttime when there's an emergency outage, these things are extremely valuable during times like that and they get stolen constantly. One running at nighttime, I constantly hear stories of people running up, stealing it, taking off in the middle of the night. This you can run inside to power up your equipment while the doors are locked. A lot of people really want something like that for that particular reason. After the initial cost of the unit, and if you want to add some solar panels, for example, your energy is technically free. Yes, you have the initial cost of the unit, but solar is always free, whereas you're always buying fuel and oil for these generators. So over a very long period of time, this can be more cost effective than a generator. It just really depends on how much you're going to run it. Another nice feature to the new Delta II Max right here, and I'm happy to see, this has a UPS feature built into it. That's an uninterrupted power supply. So say you were gone or you want to plug in some medical equipment, security systems, routers, things such as that. You can plug this into the wall. It'll pass through charge up to 1800 watts through the unit via your wall outlet. And then it goes right out the outlets of the unit itself. In the event of a power outage, the grid goes down, the outlet goes down. This swaps over in 30 milliseconds, which is fast enough to keep most electronics going, and it'll start running off of internal battery power automatically. That's really nice, especially for security systems and internet systems, if you want to keep those going in the event that you know there's a chance that you're going to lose the grid itself. That's not something that you get with a gas generator unless you have a smart generator. By the way, I should mention EcoFlow does offer very very smart dual fuel generators if you want something that's not solar powered. They've got their hands in a little bit of everything. So let's discuss a few more features of this. Again, your generators typically, you're going to have less initial upfront cost. They can technically run longer, but you're going to have to always add fuel to them at additional cost. They do have some pros, there's no doubt about that. So let's take a quick look at the front side of the unit. This will tell you your input voltage, your output voltage your battery power, and time remaining. So whenever you plug in something and go to run things, well, it'll let you know how quick to recharge and how quick to discharge. By the way, you see this offers Bluetooth pairing. You can run an app with this, just like all other EcoFlow products, to completely control this via the app. It's a nice feature. You can make adjustments on recharging wattage. So if you're running a small generator to recharge this, as well as a host of other features in that app. And on the front, we have two USB-A's, top left, fast charge USB's, 100 watt USB-C on the left and right hand side. So here on the side, this is where you can add up to two additional batteries. I'm really happy to see companies are starting to do this on units of this size. 2400 watts is a lot of power. People may use these to power up small cabins, off-grid structures, or run critical appliances for several days in a home if you're going through an outage. So I like to see that you can upgrade this if you want to for more capacity. I'm also really happy to see a thousand watts of recharging on a model this size. That's the best of anything I've tested in this particular size range. A thousand watts of solar can get you some serious recharging and use out of this unit. I would like to see a 30 amp RV plug, even though this technically doesn't have 30 amps of output. However, do note that you can get conversion adapters to go from a 20 amp plug like this to a 30 amp RV. Those are available on Amazon. All right, so let's get this unit charged up. I just plugged it into the wall back there. I have it on fast charge mode that is adjustable. 
and we are just under that 1800 watts of input from the wall and keep in mind we can add an additional thousand watts of solar to that this is without a doubt going to be the quickest charging unit in the industry on this size by the way one other thing to notice completely silent even when 1800 watts of charging going on all right so here we are out in my shop processing room and this is the biggest request that i have any time i test a product like this most people are buying devices like this for freezers and refrigerators. So keep in mind, even though this is a very powerful device, anytime you're plugging in compressor appliances like a freezer, refrigerator, or an AC, the initial surge and startup on that compressor is very strong. So plug one appliance in at a time. If you hear the compressor kick on, give it 20 to 30 seconds because typically the compressor is very high wattage and then it'll settle out to only 100 and something watts is all that these pull. But you gotta give it time for that settle out period. Then plug your next appliance in and go. Probably the second biggest item that I say people want these things for is medical equipment, CPAPs, BiPAPs, and other things. I can go ahead and tell you, those don't hardly pull any wattage at all. You're gonna be able to run a very, very long time on a device like this. All right, so I've got AC power turned on. I'll flip this where the compressor can come back on. All right, you've seen the lights flicker, maybe you've seen it, compressor is running. No problem for this device to start this up. And this has over a thousand watt pull whenever it starts up. This refrigerator is very power hungry for some reason. All right, here is my deep freezer cord. Now that I see the refrigerator is still staying nice and settled out, we'll plug in our deep freezer. I don't know if it was running or not. Typically deep freezers that are full of food, don't run very long. Actually, the compressor kicked on. We're pulling over 1,200 watts right now. Okay, so everything is settled out nicely. It's 5.30 p.m. We're gonna come back out here tomorrow morning. I'm gonna let this run all night because typically that's what a lot of people are gonna do in a power outage situation. And then you would have the opportunity tomorrow to recharge this with solar panels or if your power's back on, you could recharge it that way. Or if you had a little small generator that you don't mind running during the day, but you don't wanna hear at night, there's lots of different ways to recharge these devices. But we're starting to talk big enough batteries and capacity here to run important appliances like this all through the night. At least, I think we should. We'll find out in the morning to see if we still have battery power. Okay, so it's next morning and it's been 14 hours later. I've been checking on this all throughout the night and I just missed it. You can see I've unplugged the cord from it, stuck it in the wall. Looks like we got somewhere around maybe 13 hours of runtime. And I've just plugged both of these into the wall. Neither compressor kicked on. They're both still at temperature. So it ran all the way through the night. I should have got out here and got up a little earlier this morning. That's my fault. But without a doubt, it ran both of them all through the night. So now let's put this through a little bit of a torture test. I wanna to try to get up near the max capacity. It's probably gonna be hard for me to nail that 2400, but if we get 2000 watts plus, understand that should run any 120 volt appliance that you have in your house. All right, here we are at zero watts. By the way, if you're curious about the little red symbol up there, this is a beta version that I've been testing. So that symbol's on there and I'm also using a beta app. So let's turn on our heater. Go ahead and go to setting one. You can see how much these pull heaters use a tremendous amount of power. That's way more than, well, my window unit AC uses. So let's go on up to high. Over a thousand watts and climbing. All right, let's turn on a heat lamp. Add a little more power draw to this. Now let's really ramp this up. Turn on our heat gun. Start with low. 1600 watts let me go to high 2200 watts right there awesome this should be a really good test right here we'll hold this for a little bit as you can see we're pulling a tremendous amount of power off of this battery just for reference my shop usually pulls three to six hundred watts throughout the day with freezers and refrigerators and other things running it's very rare I get up around 2,000 watts in my shop unless I have all of my high bay work lights on and running big barrel fans and things such as that. So the fans are blowing, but I can't, I can't even really hear them. Just maybe a slight breeze coming out of there. So this is definitely quieter than, say, my Delta Pro and some other models that I've tested. That's very, very quiet. And that's good, especially if you're using this for camping or RVing and it's inside. 
All right, so this is a 15 amp miter saw right here, and it's probably one of the highest surge and most powerful 120 volt appliances I've had. Y'all seen me test it on the channel before, so we might as well go for the big stuff, right? We already know that this can run just about anything that we wanted to, especially seeing it hold a steady 2200 watts right there. But you're talking big initial surges right here, and whenever you bury it in a block of wood like that, the wattage really runs up as well on a saw like this. So let's see if it'll cut through it. Well, it cut right through the block, no problem. I don't recommend running your device this close to a saw because it's gonna fill it full of sawdust, but just figured I'd do that for one quick cut and test. All right, so this is another test that I'm pretty much always gonna run, especially with a device in this power range. So right here behind this bag, I have a one horsepower shallow well jet pump. These are quite common here in the Southeast where we have a very low water table. A lot of people run them. So whenever I think of a device like this, I wanna protect my food. And if I can get water, if you're lucky enough that you have a 120 volt pump, well, let's see if it'll run it. These do have a very high initial startup and surge, which trips out a lot of generators. But once it gets to running, I know it's around the eight to 900 watt range, which should be fine for this. We just gotta get over that initial surge. I'm not expecting any issues here, but let's see. All right, so let's try this out. Pump is flipped on. As soon as we start running some water, the pressure will drop and it should kick in. Let's see if this unit can handle the surge of one horsepower motor start up. We're almost there. All right, it's running. Perfect. And just like that, right back up to pressure. So that is awesome. If you happen to be somebody with a 120 volt shallow well jet pump, chances are, unless it's some kind of monster that I've never seen, this should run it. Now you've got drinking water, bathing water, and you know, well, just one of the most important resources on the planet. All right, so final thoughts on the new EcoFlow Delta II Max. I think this is gonna be kind of the bread and butter for them. This is the mid-range portable power station that's very powerful, very capable, but doesn't cost several thousand dollars like some of the larger models. So I can see this being appealing to a lot of people. I can't get over how small it is. This is the most compact portable power station I've ever tested in the 24 or 2000 plus watt range. I love how compact everything is getting. Plus not to mention, I just tested a competitor's model to this. It didn't have as much solar. It's a lot bigger and bulkier a little heavier, so I like that they're scaling everything down. Hopefully you enjoyed the comparison between the gas generators and portable power stations. Without a doubt, gas generators are just gonna appeal to a certain audience. These right here, for various reasons mentioned, are gonna appeal to other people as well. Obviously these sell or these companies wouldn't be in business making these things. I think I may have the perfect place for this. We're building another structure on the property in the future. This may be the perfect power size and battery size, especially being that I can add on to potentially run a small structure. We'll just have to see how all that plays out. Thank y'all so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.